Hi everyone, welcome to the session of threat modeling. I am Lahir Vijayasekar. I will be focusing on discussing about threat modeling and threat modeling tools and also about security development lifecycle which has been introduced by Microsoft. So our focus is in to look at application security problem and why we should take care of this problem this more. If you look at the uh, numbers that I have here, it indicates that application layer is in uh, risk actually. 20% of all vulnerabilities that we discover are high or critical risk in applications. So if you further look at them, there are like 2.7% of them are in the category of critical risk, 7.3% are at high risk and 12% is it at medium risk. And also we find issues in web applications and uh, this has been a bigger problem uh, in the industry of software development. If you look at further, we find issues in the same domain like authorization weaknesses, authentication weaknesses, uh, leakage of information, injection attacks like SQL injections, deal of service attacks, certain exposures of interfaces. Uh, those are some of the issues that we need to consider in application vulnerabilities taxonomy. Uh, if you look at why this is much more important for us in the industry of software development is the cost which we have to bear. If you look at the diagram, uh, what we have here, cost of fixing vulnerabilities at early stages and also cost of fixing vulnerabilities at later stages are differ in cost. So fixing them earlier will save your money if you find them even after developments and uh, implementing it. So the cost to fix them will be much more higher in numbers. So that is one of the crucial factors to look at and that is one of the better reason to identify vulnerabilities at the designing stages rather moving them into the uh, latter stages. So, so security development life cycle is of course a software development process where many companies now looking into the security development life cycle rather than typical software development life cycle. This has been introduced by or proposed by Microsoft to reduce maintenance cost and they wanted to increase the reliability of software related security bugs. They wanted to reduce them. Uh, the cycle of the improvement of the security development life cycle, uh, Bill Gates seems to be the one who introduced this or who initiated the project of security development life cycle and they wanted to have a robust framework to identify issues that might arrive in internal systems. In 2004, Microsoft senior leadership team agrees to uh, initiate uh, the security development life cycle for their products they were worrying about sensitive information or sensitive uh, stuff that they had in the applications and in 2005 to 2007 they were enhanced in the security development life cycle so one of the famous products that they involved is windows vista is the first operating system to go through a full cycle of security development now, they have much more enhanced tools like threat modeling where you can identify threats earlier in the designing levels of software development.
especially people who engage in the designing stages like software architects uh, have to go through this process they have to define the de design the diagrams and they have to find out issues and they have to propose fixes for them and the involvement is actually security experts and also almost all the engineers in the software de development domain who factor if we look at the who factor of this model hackers used to make threats against software systems that you and me develop so we need to find out mitigation mechanisms so mitigation steps for the threats that might be introduced by hackers the what factor of course this is a repeatable process where we need to address threats in your applications first we should design a diagram and then we should identify the threat and then mitigation steps then we need to go for the development process and then to validate them when you should start it it's much more better if you can start at the early stages so you have enough time to fix them you have enough time to plan them the worst case is identifying issues after implementing a system where it, it is a uh, much more costly for the team to go for a reverse in process why we need to do this is actually a uh, you can develop and you can deliver much more secure products to your customers and if there can be cases where you develop systems for your internal purposes and you can improve the same design you can improve the, your code uh, one of the reasons are actually attackers think differently than software development teams this allow you to find security problems early and predict them uh, and effectively remove them through the process so how to make a threat model is simply a dft diagram if you are aware of how to do a dft diagram you can apply your skills into the same and make sure you keep uh, rules of dft diagram uh, a dft diagram so you can apply the same rules that you have already learned in designing dft diagram so how do we do this is actually we first design a diagram and we have several standard mechanisms that the tool has given us the support to find out uh, different threats that might affect to different types of element which we have in the dft diagram so the model is actually called stride or stride we will be worrying about different different elements what threats might engage or might come with different different elements so stride uh, the meaning behind it is actually s for spoofing of user identity t for tampering r for repudiation i for information disclosure d for denial of service and e for elevation of privilege the process of threat modeling is diagramming as the first stage and then you can identify the threat you can do it manually if you are very much aware of a uh, number of threats then the better way to do is actually get the support of this tool and then to identify the threats through the tool as a report and then you can go for a panel of security experts and software developers architects and everybody can sit together and then propose mitigation steps especially it is not uh, an advisable method uh, to invent new mitigations you can go for existing mitigation steps 
you can apply existing mechanisms and then you can go for coding or implementing afterwards you can validate your code against what you planned in the designing stage with different tools we will be looking into different tools of how to validate in another slide so designing a dft diagram of course you need to include processes data stores if you have and also data flows uh, something special to look at is to include trust boundaries you can have diagrams for scenarios that may be helpful for you uh, update diagrams as product changes is one of the very important factor to look at if your product change in future you can update your diagram and go for a reanalysis and then you can find out issues other than what you had in your previous design you can keep different versions of your diagram and you can enumerate your assumptions and also dependencies then afterwards you can find list of issues or list of threats that might arise these are the elements of dft diagramming here in threat modeling tools you have external entities like people some other systems that might uh, inter interact with your system you can have processes dlls exes com objects components or services maybe web services or assemblies you can have data flows like function calls or remote procedure calls network traffic remotes data stores might be like databases you can have a file registry shared memories or else queues or stacks and trust boundaries you might be having process boundaries and file system boundaries as well if you look at uh, trust boundaries you can add these boundaries uh, that intersect your data flows in your dft diagrams you might be having number of data flows you can have boundaries to intersect them and identify involved threads in these different different flows and surfaces where an attacker can in interject you can put trust boundaries on the surfaces and processes talking across network always have a trust boundary so let's say if you have few processes that are uh, interacting through networks you can have trust boundaries for that this is the iteration process you can start diagramming like what you do in typical dft diagramming you can have a level 1 which is the highest level or the top level of the dft which might be having a single process and several other external entities and also flows at dft level 1 you can further break down your previous process into several other processes and you can enhance your thinking to connect certain other data flows if you have level 2 even you can further enhance it in different different levels you will be able to find out number of threats that might arrive so what you can do is after designing allow your tool to find out issues for you and then propose mitigations that you can find with your other people like the experts in security and then go for the implementation and then you can go for validation tools some of the key points to look at is actually applying security development tools to validate the security portions of your software architecture and you can get a checklist to go through and to discuss with experts stroide analysis is the first tool 
in the chain that should be followed or that can be validated by below types of tools static code analysis once you have developed your system you will be having a bunch of code you can apply a static code analysis tool where you will be able to validate whether you have the sets anymore or not and also a security testing tool if you have a binary or a running software running tool then you can go for a vulnerability assessment where the assessment tool will provide you number of issues that exist in your system so these are the key points to look at uh, then we will be focusing on doing a practical in microsoft stretch modeling thank you